We're going to continue our discussion of improper integrals, and this time we're going to look at improper integrals with infinite discontinuities, meaning that um, the integrand, or that function inside, has an infinite discontinuity somewhere. Um, and it could be at an endpoint or inside, uh, in between the interval from uh, A to B. So this time it looks like the infinite discontinuity happens at zero. And so the way we handle this is we make it a definite integral. I'm going to put um, an A here, and rather than get the, uh, the, the area from 0 to 1, since that involves an infinite region, we're just going to get an expression for this area, and then we're going to push A closer to 0 from the right-hand side. So I'm going to write this integral as the integral from A to 1, but then we're just going to let a go to 0 from the right-hand side. We've already taken this antiderivative, so this should be quick. This is going to be negative x to the negative uh, 1 from a to 1, and we know that equals uh, negative uh, 1 over 1 minus negative 1 over a. And that ends up becoming negative 1 plus 1 over a. And now we reintroduce the limit, and we say, well, the limit as a goes to 0 from the right of negative 1 plus 1 over a. Um, so just be careful here. <clears throat> as a goes to 0 from the right, this gets smaller and smaller, and so we're div and it's positive, so we're dividing by... Um, a really tiny number, which means that the actual value goes to infinity. Right? So this is going to go to infinity, so we go to 1 plus infinity, so we can say that this, uh, this equals infinity, but really what we care about is that it, it diverges. All right? So that area is not finite. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk in a later video, sort of an extra video, about functions of the form 1 over x to the p because there's, um, you can get a good understanding of their, the behavior at a glance if you understand how their graphs behave. Um, for instance, you can see how 1 over x squared is thinner as you go to infinity, as x goes to infinity, but it's really fat as y is going to infinity when you're going, kind of going up the y-axis there. But we'll look at that um, in, a, in another video. Let's do another example. All right, let's look at 1 over x the integral from 0 to 1. So again, the issue is the issue is that discontinuity at 0. So I'm going to write this as the integral from a to 1 of 1 over x. And I'm going to take the limit as a goes to 0 from the right. And we know that this is the natural log of x from a to 1 which is ln of 1 minus ln of a, <clears throat> which equals 0 minus ln of a. And now we take the limit as a goes to 0 from the right of negative ln of a. And so hopefully you have a good a good vision of the uh, natural log graph. As a goes to 0 from the right-hand side, then the natural log graph is going down towards negative infinity. So we're taking the opposite of negative infinity, which is infinity. So it diverges. And so 1 over x, if you remember from the previous video, 1 over x happens to be sort of too fat in both directions. It, it sums to infinity as x goes to infinity and um, as uh, as you know the integral from zero to one that that those regions are just both equally fat that they're um, the areas blow up to to infinity all right now let's look at one where the infinite discontinuity happens in between the two limits of integration. Um, so as usual, what we're going to do is break up this integral, and we're going to break it up at the point of discontinuity. So the discontinuity is here at 0, 
So let's write this as the integral from negative 1 to 0 of 1 over x squared. And then add that using property of integrals for, to the integral from 0 to 1. All right, and then, of course, we're going to let... So just slow down at this step. Some students, I think, get get this wrong. you got to be careful. So I'm, I'm writing this as the integral from negative 1 to, let's say, a. So, uh, And I'm letting a go to 0 from the left-hand side. So just, again, graphically, we're getting this area from negative 1 to 1. But I'm putting an a right here and I'm pushing a closer to zero from the left hand side whereas in the other one this guy here is going to be the integral from b to one of one over x squared and this is going to be the limit as b goes to zero from the right hand side because we're putting a b here and we're just getting area and pushing B closer and closer to, to zero from that side. All right, so we've already done this, um, these definite integrals. This is uh, negative one, uh, let's say negative, negative x to the negative one, evaluated from negative one to A. And this guy here is negative x to the negative one from B to one. So here I get negative 1 over a minus negative, negative 1 to the negative 1. So I just write that as 1 over negative 1. So there's negatives floating all over the place. Just slow down here. Be careful. And now we can simplify this to be negative 1 over a. Now this negative negative one becomes a plus, so this is in the end plus one or minus one. And we'll introduce the limit again. This is the limit as a goes to zero from the left. And then this guy down here uh, to the right would be um, negative one over one minus negative one over b. So that becomes negative one plus one over b. And again, we're going to bring the limit back. This is going to be the limit as b goes to 0 from the right. Now, we've actually we just did this problem in the last example. This we know diverges because as, zero goes, uh, as b goes to 0 from the right, 1 over b goes to infinity. So this diverges. And an important concept to, to sort of internalize is that at this point, you technically don't have to even go check that left-hand limit, because if one, even one of them diverges, the whole thing diverges. Um, you can kind of intuitively make sense of that, because if if this right half of this graph, uh, that area is not does not approach a, a finite value, well, then adding its left half is not going to somehow make it. Um, it's not going to somehow cancel that out. So we don't have to um, actually check the left-hand side. But if you were to do that you push zero, uh, a to zero from the left hand side this actually becomes negative one over really small negative number which becomes positive infinity so this also diverges that becomes infinity so it diverges but um, you only need to check one one arm to to conclude that it diverges so the entire integral here will say diverges all right so there are some examples of improper integrals with infinite discontinuities.